Before we get into the video, you're going to want to like and subscribe. Trust me, it's in your best interest. Today I'm going to be talking about how to find an apartment in New York as an expat, someone who is a resident of another country looking to move to New York. Tip number one. Now first of all, I would actually find a sublet for about three months to a year depending on how confident and comfortable you are. Now I personally waited for an entire year to build up my credit and to learn a lot of things needed to be learnt for the whole entire process of getting an apartment, paying bills and dealing with checks, something that I did not have to deal with in Australia because everything is digitalized in the land of Oz. It takes roughly about six months to a year to build up your credit in America. That's something that I didn't know. I thought it was going to take me years to build up my credit, but I'm happy to say that I have a very high credit score and I only moved to America a year ago. Now I want to make another video about this, but what you do is basically get a Discover card, which is really easy to get. You don't need to be approved for anything. You don't need to have a credit score. It's it's very good for beginners so I highly suggest a discover card once you use that for about a year or six months depending on your income and your history you can apply for a better card so in about six months after my discover card I had very high credit and it depends on your income as well but I applied for an American Express Platinum card which I got accepted for straight away and so I have two credits now and a high credit score all of that to say credit is very majorly important when you're applying for an apartment in New York City so that's definitely something that I would prioritize as soon as you move here. It also enabled me to get a feel for different suburbs. Now when I moved to America straight away I moved to Little Italy for two weeks really close to Nolita and that was a lovely area and then when I moved to the East Village I had no idea what I was really getting myself into but I was pleasantly surprised and my my work is very close by so when I came here in 2017 I didn't even know East Village existed and it's literally one of the best suburbs in Manhattan I didn't know that and you really have to figure it out once you move here try to sublet in a place where you're close by to your work I would say and sort of just travel around as you're going and trying out different places always keep um, in the back of your mind is this somewhere that I would like to live it's also really helpful because if you have a roommate or two it helps you to save up for when you get your apartment and also your roommates sort of help you see how it is to live in America unbeknownst to them even seeing how other people are living day to day it's really helpful because it is a really huge thing moving from another country obviously my roommate really helped me with that the biggest thing that she helped me with with was understanding checks because I really could not wrap my head around it and she literally when we were paying our rent together she walked me through the entire process and so a year ago from now I could have never imagined myself signing up for a lease and you know paying for rent uh, if I hadn't gone through all of that for a year another thing is that you get a great relationship with a landlord that you sublet with I mean fingers crossed but I've had nothing but lovely experiences with landlords and I have a great relationship with my landlord for this year and so when it comes to either renew your lease or to find another apartment landlord references are like gold in Manhattan you know slash New York because landlords when they're looking at your application they're really taking to heart uh, I've been applying for a lot of apartments lately and um, what I've noticed is landlords really take to heart a good uh, reference letter so I kind of signed on to the lease I had like a one month sublet but then the other roommate kind of left and then I was filling in for her and so the other roommate wanted to renew the lease and so we signed on together and I didn't even know that was like gonna happen but it just happened and then I developed a great relationship with the landlord and it all just fell into place so I would definitely recommend the route that I went through. <laughs> It also really teaches you how to call supers and deal with old pre-war historic buildings in Manhattan. For this entire
entire year I called my super so many times and my roommate had to do it a couple of times first and I kind of saw how everything is being done here because Manhattan is a complete different game from anywhere else in the world. You're gonna get leaked ceilings, like broken ceilings and that's just like a normal thing here. Broken cabinets, things like that and then you're gonna have to call your super to fix it. Especially if you're leaving, living somewhere in, um, in an area that's like very prehistoric and has really old buildings such as Lower East Side and East Village, that's something that you definitely need to learn how to do. They really don't teach you these kind of things in school. Number two, I would start applying to apartments. Now my favorite two sites of finding apartments are Zillow and Street Easy. Now when I was doing my research I heard a lot of people talk really good things about Street Easy and I like it. It's my second favorite but nothing comes between me and Zillow. Zillow is my favorite because it essentially shows you the map of Manhattan and then it shows you all of the prices and where the apartment is and it's just I find much easier to navigate and what was really a concern for me is like I need to find all of the best apartments I'm gonna go on every single website I'm gonna go on all like every single Facebook group and you know truly a rent hop like all of these different places uh, Craigslist even but I would always find the same apartments on Zillow and Street Easy everywhere that I went so anytime an agent or broker is showing an apartment Zillow and Street Easy are the first places that they put their apartment out so if you're looking I would suggest to avidly look like two to three times a day because they depending on the month and we'll get into that later depending on the month they will be posting new apartments like every half an hour and so you're really gonna have to like look and apply and it's really first come first serve here in uh, Manhattan so you really need to uh, reply as soon as possible you know provide them with as much information and a lot of the times I found that they wouldn't even reply to me even if I was like, hey, I'm earning 40 times the rent, I have all these documents. Right now I'm speaking in a different sort of circumstance. Uh, rents are much higher than they've ever been, even before the pandemic apparently. And there's like a higher demand for apartments. And so a lot of brokers just don't reply. Uh, so you have to be like vigilant you have to like really email and chase up with them and finding an apartment especially right now has to be your full-time job I mean if you're looking at this like a year from now or two years from now definitely look at what's going on in the market for apartments in Manhattan look at news articles because honestly it changes every single month number three and I don't remember who said this but there was a really good point that someone said uh, where you should really prioritize your amenities and your you're not going to necessarily get every single amenity that you want but what really helped me when I first started out was making a table of things that are non-negotiable like I definitely need to have south-facing windows with sunlight I need to have some sort of a view I don't want to just face you know a wall and then you know some things that are okay if I didn't have but it would be nice to have like laundry in the building and then things that are like I could totally do without like I could like walk up six flights of stairs I can live on a busy street or I can't live on a busy street things like that so make those three tables and then as you're looking for apartments definitely keep that in mind now once you've decided on what neighborhoods you'd like to live in and what amenities are non-negotiable for you keyword non-negotiable so don't settle once you know what you want do not settle until you get what you want you always have to keep in the back of your mind though that you're not going to get absolutely every single thing that you want to get for example in the east village it's absolutely like impossible to find an apartment with laundry like it's a rare gem that you find laundry in the building but with that being said I also really believe that you shouldn't limit yourself on what you want. Once you have that list, uh, don't settle until you get at least some of the things and always keep an open mind thinking, hey, you know, maybe there isn't laundry in the East Village, but maybe there might be. Maybe I'll luck out. Maybe I will be the exception to the rule. Always got to think that you are the exception to the rule. Don't be close-minded, but just know in the back of your head that you have your top priorities, nice-to-haves, and I could do without.
Number four, once you find that apartment, and I strongly suggest that you email the broker if you're super confident that this looks good for you. Okay, it depends on the market actually. So if there's a lot of advertisements, just apply for the ones that really like that look good and you want to check out um, but if there's not really a lot or you're on a time crunch definitely uh, give it a chance but don't do this every single time because you don't want to waste your own time knowing perfectly full well that you need to have laundry in the apartment but there's like no laundry in like you know a five mile radius or whatever um, don't waste the broker's time don't waste your time and energy and just keep looking out for the things that you want that's why the list is super important now you have to be short quick and provide as much information as possible straight away to brokers there is a certain way you must talk to brokers they are their own breed god bless them in manhattan but like don't waste their time, say exactly what you mean, don't beat around the bush. Uh, usually, so I say, I earn this amount straight away. Uh, I'm looking to move on the 1st of April and I really, really like this apartment. I'd love to see it. I'm available afternoons all week and I'm available at 9am on Friday or whatever it is. If they don't reply and it's something that you really like, you can definitely reach out again and say, hey, uh, just circling back to this because I found that a lot of them just don't reply uh, because they get a lot of inquiries and that's totally fine. But you basically like as soon as you inquire, don't just do like inquiry automatically and that's it like actually sit there and advertise yourself okay number five so once you're actually at the apartment I would suggest filming it every single time it doesn't matter if the broker has already filmed the apartment for you just really nicely and politely say hey do you mind if I film this and I have asked every single time ten times out of ten the broker was like yep film go ahead so that really helps because when you're in the moment there's so many things to look around you really don't know what you're looking at until you kind of go back and you're like oh like what you literally are there for like five minutes um and so you can look back at the video definitely but what to look out for my number one thing <laughs> as funny as this sounds is vibes now some places look amazing some places look immaculate but if there's something that just isn't sitting right with me I am just I can't go through with the application process if you're not like in tune to energy or you think you know that's bull that's totally fair uh, but when you go in just see how like first like first impression how does it make you feel not think but how like the first not the like after like two minutes but like the first initial reaction um irregardless of anything else like how does this make me feel when i first step into the apartment that's super important and then obviously you're going to want to look out for things that you might think are red flags personally i have never come across red flags i just knew that like hey i see uh, a wall that's just facing another wall and i don't like that so i'm not going to apply for this apartment sort of thing i've never really looked for red flags the only thing really for me would be like kind of just listen to see if like the walls are like cardboard or like you can hear people uh from like the neighboring you know apartment if you bump into someone before like you're waiting for the broker just politely ask hey how are you finding this apartment i'm checking out you know this today and i'm just wondering just like to see if you like where you live or like is it worth for me to apply to this building and they will tell you some tea so that's really helpful as well number five i would try to talk to the broker when you're in the apartment now sometimes there are open houses and it's so busy and if you don't feel comfortable you know talking to the broker that's fine but I would definitely recommend that you do and say hey I'm Margarita um, I applied for this apartment I'm really interested and do I just email you asking for an application and they're like yes oh my god blah 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 blah, blah. and just say how excited and how happy you are literally the second you walk out of the door email them straight away and so they can match sort of how they met you and 
you know, your email, that's much more personable. If you are, you know, getting a broker and it's just one-on-one, -on -one, that's even better. But yeah, try to have a great relationship with your brokers because they are the leeway into you getting an apartment, um, into the landlord accepting you. Of course, the brokers don't have anything to do with actually, you know, accepting you, but it really does help uh, to maintain a good relationship and be in good standing for them to sort of to sort of be on your side, you know, um, when they're sending off all of your important information to the landlord. Number five, speaking of important information, here are the things you need in general to apply for a Manhattan apartment. Are you ready? Here we go. It's a lot. Number one is a letter of employment. Now, I recently applied to an apartment and they required me to have a letter of employment that states that uh, I'm allowed to work here and because I work for a UK based company they're asking um, for them to be like hey like this is a US based company this is fine she's working here and it's all good this is her salary and it has to be within two weeks of the application day and like sometimes I mean I don't want to scare you off but like sometimes there are like really specific things that they ask for but not like not a lot I've only had two of these circumstances and another one was really bizarre it was like I made 40 times the rent, but then they were like, but also you need to show that you have a US guarantor, even though you do earn 40 times the rent, you have to also show that you have a guarantor that earns 80 times the rent. I'm like, I did not work this hard in order to also have a guarantor. Like, no, I am an independent boss ass bitch. Like, I don't need a guarantor. Don't worry about that. Don't mean to scare you off. It, it's not, it's not like that every single time. Usually what I'm going to provide to you is what you need. So a letter of employment is really important with the company letterhead and you know the HR. They have to state how much you earn, what your position is, when you started, all of that good stuff. Last two years of tax returns. Now I understand that you might not have this but this is why it's good to live for a year as like a sublease because you at least get one of the tax returns. That's what I did and that really helped me out and of course brokers and landlords understand that people are coming from all different areas of the globe and they don't necessarily like our US citizens so that's or, or permanent residents or you know have had their tax forms for two years so that's fine but I think that it really heightens your chances as well. Number three is two or three recent pay stubs from your work. Number four is a photo ID. Now I would provide as many as possible so currently I have an Australian passport, I have my visa identification and I have my New York state residence uh, identification. I'm also going to get an NYC ID. So as many as you can show uh, is the best. And number six is a landlord reference letter with the company letterhead and their phone number, their email and whatever the landlord is saying. But I think landlord reference letters are your golden ticket to getting accepted into a New York apartment. And finally, uh, application form. So what you're going to do is have all of these documents uh, attached in one PDF form. If you don't have Adobe Acrobat, which I didn't have, I literally just screenshotted all of the pages of the application form, put them up page one, page two, page three, page four, and then whatever they want. So essentially they'll send you an email asking exactly what they want, but this is me providing it to you just so you know, uh, as backup, as reference, um, that this is what they most likely always will ask for. Uh, depending on, you know, what they prioritize first, they might ask for a landlord reference letter first or an, a letter of employment first, but however they sort of you know email you saying this requires the attached application form filled out and signed uh, a landlord re reference letter a letter of employment uh check stubs blah 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 so i would literally they said application form first great i'm going to screenshot sign whatever make sure that every single line is specifically filled out perfectly make sure that you're not making any mistakes like if you have like your social security number make sure your social security number is written down correctly uh so then i would screenshot you know application number one page number one page number two page number three the screenshot added to page number one of your PDF two, three, four, and then if they're asking for a landlord reference letter, then I would screenshot that and then add it or whatever. If they have have a PDF, I just add into there as page five, and then your employment letter is page six. 
page check stubs whatever page seven eight nine if they're asking for three uh and like so and so and so and have it all in one pdf package so it'll be about 20 pdf pages long and you're going to want to send that over as soon as humanely possible to the broker and whatever else that they ask for to do they're going to ask for also like a non-disclosure or something i don't remember what the actual thing is but it's not like a contract to sign a lease or anything it's just the broker saying hey i am um you know representing on behalf of the landlord i'm representing on behalf of the tenant literally just like a month or two ago because omicron is you know the surge has gone away and everyone's moving back to new york there is a really big demand for apartments and they have they literally had only one month's worth of a broker fee for like this entire time sometimes they didn't even have like a broker's fee and amazing right but now it's back to 15% of the whole uh, year's worth of rent which is a good chunk of money so always be um, mindful of that so you're going to send that over as you're send signing the lease uh, and then yeah attach whatever else you need double check everything and send it over to the broker and wait to get approved to your brand new apartment how exciting okay so number seven and this isn't really a step but more so it's a tip and oh my god i wish i wish someone has told me this because it's like the best piece of advice nothing is set in stone in the best way possible now everyone on youtube is like you must earn 40 times the rent no you don't it is a general rule, but there are some landlords that are more lenient than others that don't care. You can have 35 times the rent, um, definitely not like 10 times the rent, but you know, don't don't be too scared of like, oh, I'm not like eligible to apply for this. Now, I forgot to mention also there's a $20 application fee for most apartments. Again, nothing is set in stone sometimes. They don't even have an application fee, which is great, but you know, sometimes they don't want 40 times the rent. Sometimes you need 40 times the rent and 80 times the rent for your guarantor like 